Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what we're going to do is check out Fedora 43. As of the time I'm recording this video, it's the latest release of the popular Linux desktop, and you're going to see it in action in today's video. And Fedora itself is one of my favorite distributions. I also really enjoy the GNOME desktop as well, and the GNOME desktop is presented very well in Fedora 43, as it's been in pretty much every release of the distribution. And in this video, I'm going to give you my thoughts on the latest release. I'll let you know what's new this time around. I'll go over the installation process, and I'll give you my overall thoughts on whether or not I think you should install this distribution on your computer. And as you'll see during my review, Fedora 43 doesn't reinvent the wheel this time around. Instead, it focuses on polishing what's already great and updating the software stack to deliver some of the best tools that the Linux community has to offer. Under the hood, this release ships with Linux kernel 6.17 and GNOME 49, which together bring most of the improvements that you'll notice day to day. And in this review, we'll take a closer look at some of the highlights this release has to offer. And you know what? I'm excited to show off Fedora 43, so let's get started right now. And here it is. Fedora 43 brings the usual round of software updates along with a series of small refinements that make the platform feel even more polished. The headline change for desktop users this time around is going to be GNOME 49, which is the latest version of the popular desktop environment as of the time I'm recording this video. Like Fedora itself, GNOME 49 focuses on incremental improvements rather than major new features, offering subtle tweaks that enhance usability while keeping the overall experience familiar. One notable change, though, is actually what's missing. Fedora 43 drops X11 entirely, making Wayland the only supported display server. For those of you that are new to Linux, a display server is what handles how graphics are drawn on your screen. X11 has served that role for decades, but Wayland is its modern replacement. It's faster, more secure, and better suited for today's hardware. Fedora adopted Wayland by default years ago, and now it's stable enough that the old X11 fallback is no longer needed and is now not even present. Most users won't even notice the difference though, but it is a big milestone for the Linux desktop. Now, when it comes to changes in GNOME that you'll actually notice, let's start with the default apps. In GNOME 49, there's a new video player and also a new document viewer. The longtime totem app, which was used to play videos, has been replaced by Showtime, and Papers now takes over document viewing for events. Both of these serve the same purposes as their predecessors, but they're built on the more modern GTK4 toolkit, bringing them in line with the rest of the GNOME desktop. Another improvement comes with GNOME software, which is the app store used for installing and updating software. It looks and works mostly the same in Fedora 43, but it's faster now, especially when dealing with large Flatpak repositories like Flathub. And this means that browsing, searching, and updating apps in Fedora 43 feels noticeably smoother and more responsive. The lock screen also gains some long overdue functionality as well. You can now reboot or shut down your computer right from the lock screen, and media controls have been added too. And this means that you no longer have to unlock your system just to do things like skip a song, stop playback, reboot, or shut down. And sure, these are small improvements, but they're welcome nonetheless and these quality of life additions bring GNOME closer to what other desktops have been offering for a while. Finally, GNOME 49 includes a handful of smaller refinements as well. For example, the Do Not Disturb toggle has been moved from the notification area to quick settings, where it makes more sense alongside other controls such as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And if you use an HDR display, there's now a brightness slider, which addresses one of the most common complaints, and it also makes HDR far more practical to use. Overall, GNOME 49 won't reinvent how you use your computer, and none of its changes are going to represent flagship features. However, the changes I've just mentioned, along with a multitude of smaller tweaks, are sure to make the experience even better. Next, let's talk about the installation process. Fedora introduced a brand new installer back in version 42, which was a welcome update, since the old one was starting to feel a bit dated. There wasn't anything necessarily wrong with the previous installer, however, when you compare it to Ubuntu's more modern experience, it just felt behind. The catch in Fedora 42, though, was that the new installer was only available for the flagship GNOME edition, while other spins still used the old installer. Now, with Fedora 43, that's finally changed. Every official edition now uses the new installer, giving the entire Fedora lineup a more consistent and polished experience. 
As for the installation process itself, it's straightforward and familiar. Just like in previous releases, you'll start in live mode, and there you can test Fedora and check hardware compatibility before you install it. Once you are ready to install it, the installer walks you through a few simple questions, and within minutes, Fedora will be set up and ready to use. On my system, the whole process took under 10 minutes, though your results may vary depending on your hardware. Overall, the installer in Fedora 43 feels modern, it's quick, and it's also easy to navigate, and it's approachable even for newcomers. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but I wanted to let you know about an ebook I created recently that'll help you out if you're considering switching your computer to Linux. In fact, it'll give you 10 tips for making the transition smoother. And I get it. Linux is a huge topic that's often confusing to newcomers. There's distributions of desktop environments to keep track of, and all kinds of quirks. But switching to Linux doesn't have to be a chore. My latest ebook will give you some helpful tips that'll help guide you. For just $15, you could download this PDF that'll help you along your migration path, and it'll be a great asset for your Linux journey. And best of all, every purchase helps support Learn Linux TV and will help me make even more Linux related content for you guys. So support the channel and get yourself a helpful ebook. It's a win win. And now, let's get back to the video. And upgrading is just as seamless. Fedora 43 uses the same reliable upgrade process as before, and honestly, it's one of the best in the Linux world. Whenever a new version of Fedora becomes available, you'll see a prompt for it right inside GNOME software. All you have to do is click on it, reboot, and you're done. Having both normal updates and full version upgrades handled in the same place makes the whole experience feel unified and effortless. When it comes to my thoughts about Fedora 43 in general, it is a fantastic release, even if it's not the most exciting one. It works beautifully and delivers a great Linux experience, but there's not a lot that feels brand new. Fedora once again sticks to its proven formula providing the latest open source software without trying to reinvent itself. GNOME 49 follows the same pattern. There's no major overhauls, but there's plenty of smaller improvements that make everyday use a lot smoother. When you combine Fedora's stability with GNOME's incremental updates, you end up with a release that feels familiar and polished. And that consistency is actually one of Fedora's biggest strengths. It remains the best in class GNOME distribution. For those of you that prefer GNOME, Fedora offers the desktop exactly as its developers intend. It's clean, fast, and tightly integrated. From installation to daily use, GNOME feels perfectly at home here, and Fedora's thoughtful implementation sets a standard that other distributions might want to consider following. But, of course, Fedora's vanilla approach means you won't get some of the quality of life tweaks found in other distributions. For example, Ubuntu 25.10 also ships with GNOME 49, but it adds conveniences like a dock, desktop icons, and support for system tray icons, things that GNOME itself doesn't include without extensions. Fedora leaves these decisions up to you, sticking closely to upstream GNOME without any extra customization. And I think that makes Fedora ideal for users who want to experience GNOME as it was designed, clean, minimal, and distraction-free. Whether you choose Fedora or something like Ubuntu ultimately depends on whether you prefer a pure environment or one with enhanced usability tweaks. All in all, Fedora continues to set the bar for what a polished GNOME experience should be. Fedora 43 builds on that legacy. It's stable, well-integrated, and thoughtfully crafted. It may not change your life or anything like that, but Fedora 43 absolutely delivers one of the best Linux desktops available today, and I highly recommend that you check it out. And there you go. In today's video, we checked out Fedora 43. It's an awesome distribution and it's one of my favorites. I always make sure that I have a Fedora installation available. In fact, it's the one I install first. I really enjoy this distribution quite a bit and I think you guys will too. Anyway, let me know what you thought of this review down in the comments below and be sure to click the like button if you enjoyed this review. That not only helps Learn Linux TV, that also helps YouTube understand that Linux is important and we need more Linux related content here on YouTube. Anyway, with all that said, thank you so much for checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next one.